I know it's not Halloween yet, but I like Halloween. And it's close enough, so I got two monster books. One monster book. Two monster books. And then, a book, it's really a poem, about how to read a book. Which is fun too. Alright. Are you ready? I hope you're not scared of monsters living under your bed. You may remember meeting this little boy and his monster before. This book is called I Need My Monster. Words by Amanda Knoll and pictures by Howard McWilliam. I need my monster. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Go fishing! Back in a week, Gabe! What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing, his nose whistling, the scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? <sighs> it was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of my bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? What would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that a substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert? What kind of a name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite, and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. There was some more creaking, then Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see a sleeky, brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked, but is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell that this was not going to work either. I I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws. Like Gabe's, I thought. I heard some more scratching, and I knew Ralph was gone. 
A minute later, a third voice came from under the bed and rasped. Check out these claws, kid! I gathered my courage and peered over the edge. The claws were impressive, jagged and dark and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared! Peek through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you a picky one, she sniffed. And then she was gone. I thought Cynthia was perfectly scary. I don't know what this kid's problem is. Was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that happened if I got out. Then I heard a shuffling noise and some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, the name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws, but do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail's stumpy, Mac slurped, but I do have... An unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrified. You never know when I might lick you. I fell back on the bed laughing. Well, if you're not even going to try work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe he just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here, but I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed. Loud creaking. With scratching. I, I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry I'm late, kid. Phew! It was Gabe. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't, he explained. Those fish scared too easily. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. You keep me on my toes. Ah, toes. A delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. and the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. So you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ha ha! I knew it. We're made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, he said. I'd like to nibble your pinky. 
I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get them. No toast tonight, but you can have this, I offered, pushing the pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. The end. This book is about another way to get monsters. This is called The Little Shop of Monsters. I'll read these pages in a second, but the words are by R. L. Stein and the pictures are by Mark Brown. Psst! Hey you! Are you afraid of monsters? Do they make you shiver and shake and shut your eyes real tight at night? If you think you're brave enough, then come with me. Come on, let's go to... The Little Shop of Monsters. Here we are at the Little Shop of Monsters. Look at those big hairy monsters in the window. I hope they don't break the glass, jump out, and eat you. Would that spoil your day? This is the best shop to buy a monster. I buy all my monsters here. Isn't it cute how they growl and snap their teeth and try to bite you when you walk in? That's their way of saying hello. Aw, so cute. This monster's name is Snacker. He loves to eat snacks all day long. Go ahead, say, Hi, Snacker. But, don't shake hands with him. Do you know his favorite snack food? That's right, hands. Ooh, hold your nose! Hold your nose and don't breathe! These are the stinkiest, pukiest, rottenest, yuckiest monsters in the store. Can you guess this monster's name? Hint. It rhymes with pinky. And how about this guy? What's his name? Hint. It rhymes with jelly. Sneezer is a friendly monster. She likes to snuggle close and sneeze right in your face. Look out, here she goes. I warned you. You better get a towel and wipe the sneeze off this book. Yuck. Yuck. This huge guy is named Bubble Belly Billy. Look at that belly. He eats everything he sees. Do you know what's inside Billy's big belly now? I hope it's not your friend who lives across the street. That would be sad. These are Yucky and Mucky, the Yucky Mucky twins. They're ooey and gooey. They're stinky and slimy. They're goopy and wet and clammy and drippy. Quick, stand back. These twins love to hug. Squeezer and Teaser like to play games. Watch them play their favorite game. It's called Pinch Me Hard. Ouch! That game hurts. But it's a great game for monsters. Warning, do not try this at home. Why is she called Tina Not Ticklish? Go ahead, tickle her. Tickle her again. 
Piccolo a hundred times. See? Nothing happened. What'd you expect? She's Tina, not ticklish. Are you ticklish? Don't wake the sleeper peeper. This big hungry monster spends all his time sleeping under kids' beds. Just think, maybe there's already a hungry sleeper peeper under your bed just waiting to jump out and scare you. I hope I'm wrong. You won't like the pigla gigglers. Look at them. <laughs> They giggle all day long. <laughs> they even giggle in their sleep. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh no, now here I go. <laughs> I, I can't stop giggling. <laughs> I, I hope you don't catch it too. <laughs> You've seen a lot of monsters, but are you ready to take one home? But wait, I forgot to tell you one thing. When you come to the little shop of monsters, you don't choose a monster. A monster chooses you! Quick, turn the page! Turn it fast! Whew! You just escaped. Come back again soon. Maybe next time you visit, you'll find your monster. Or will it find you? Duh. End. Our last book is a poem called How to Read a Book. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty book. Words by Kwame Alexander and pictures by Melissa Sweet. The words in this book are a little hard to see because they're part of the artwork of the book. But I'll read carefully so you can hopefully find them. How to read a book. First, find a tree. A black tupelo or dawn redwood will do, and plant yourself. It's okay if you prefer a stoop like Langston Hughes. Once you're comfy, peel its gentle skin like you would a clementine. The color of sunrise. The scent of morning air and sweet butterfly kisses. Next, dig your thumb at the bottom of each juicy section and pop the words out. Piece by piece part by part, page by rustling page. Do you see the words? Piece by piece. Then, when the sun is so quiet, watch a novel world unfurl right before your eyes. Surprise! It's a book party stacked with all your favorite friends. A picnic of words and sounds and leaps and bounds. So get real cozy between the covers and let your fingers wander as they wander.
squeeze every morsel of each plump line until the last drop of magic drips from the infinite sky. And bursts of orange explode! beneath a perfect purple moon. Don't rush, though. Your eyes need time to adjust. Your soul needs room to bloom. Oh, I got that wrong. Look. Don't rush, though. Your eyes need time to taste. Your soul needs room to bloom. Now, sleep, dream, hope you never reach. The end. And that really is the end. I hope you liked your scary monster books. And I hope you have a good night. I love you. And I will see you next time.